We all knew it. The latest stats just confirm it, really. The cost of living has reached uh, well, some pretty scary new heights. You'd have to go back to 1990. For the last time, prices were rising at this rate. Uh, there's an economic story here, but there's also a human story, and both are all about struggle. So joining us, uh, Daryl Evans, CEO of the Mangari Budgeting Services Trust and Bernard Hickey from interest.co.nz. Good morning to you both, Daryl. If I could start with you, what are you seeing out there on the front lines in terms of the impact of inflation that's running at 5%? Um, currently, we're seeing a 71% spike in the number of families coming to us for food parcels. That's not only beneficiaries, it's working families. We're also seeing families who are absolutely struggling to pay the rent. And real estate agents across South Auckland are telling us that they're often seeing three families turn over in one home through a 12-month period. Um, coupled with um, stationery has gone up, school donations have gone up, everything has gone up. The biggest impact um, currently as well, I've been talking to Age Concern, pensioners are actually afraid to turn on the power. We've got, you know, we're in, we're in the middle of winter now, it's extremely cold, um, and the reality is people are going cold. They're, they're sitting there with the hot water bottles simply because they don't have enough dollars in their pocket. To well, the, pay, the pay pensioners the should be being compensated, though, for inflation, shouldn't they? Well, in the UK, they actually do. The £330 a year is given to every pensioner irrelevant of income across the country um, so that they, they're not afraid to turn on the power. We need to do the same here. But going back to, to food, the reality is we're seeing kids going to school hungry. I've said for a long time that two-minute noodles is now a staple part of, of children's diets. Um, they're eating them in the, in the school playgrounds raw. Um, principals are telling us they're seeing kids now presenting to school hungry. You and I both know hungry children learn absolutely nothing. And so the government has to do something. And a starting point is, is taking GST off basic food groups such as uh, fresh fruit, vegetables, bread, um, butter, etc. Um, Mum and Dad New Zealanders are struggling to put good healthy food on the table each and every night. Bernard, what could actually be done about uh, this inflation rate? I mean, we do have to remember that it's got GST incorporated and rising oil prices. So is it going to last? Well, the Reserve Bank doesn't think this spike in inflation uh, is going to last. That's why they've uh, said to the government, we can live with this for now. We're above the 1% to 3% target band. But because most of it is from GST and some increase from oil prices, uh, it's not permanent. However, there are some concerns that inflation is at the top end, end of that band, the 1% to 3% band, and the Reserve Bank will have to put up the official cash rate as soon as even October. And uh, that, that's what's concerning a lot of people who have a lot of debt. Yeah. Is that but why would it put it back up when unemployment is still reasonably high? Because that's where the pressure is going to come on for wage increases. And that's not going to happen if unemployment's high. Well, it has a policy targets agreement which says 1% to 3% is the target band. And if inflationary expectations in particular are hitting at the top of that band, it has to increase the official cash rate. Now, for now, it's managed to hold off because so many people are on floating mortgage rates. And this gives the Reserve Bank more power to move things quickly, but even then, uh, with inflation heading for, underlying inflation heading for 3%, that's a concern for the Reserve Bank, and it does have an act of parliament. Why, why which is, is it, it a concern? I mean, 5% shouldn't be a concern, though, if people were getting wage rises that were, were composite. I mean, Darrell, you, are you seeing people out there getting those wage rises? Absolutely not. I mean, we, we saw a pay, pay rise this year. Minimum wage went to $13. It's simply not enough. I don't believe in minimum wage anyhow. I believe in a livable wage, and currently we don't have that in New Zealand. Um, you know, we're seeing the beneficiaries struggling. They always have done. Minimum wage earners are turning up to our offices in droves wanting food parcel assistance. They're simply not able to, to manage their debt and repayment. You know, what we're seeing is people are going into Kiwi Saver. they're reducing their contributions, they're making withdrawals at huge levels, they're at our office day by day, needing budget advisors to help renegotiate smaller payments over longer terms. Just finally, because we're out of time, but Bernard, while you're here, the other factor is that people need to think about interest rates. Should they be thinking about fixing now because there might be an interest rate hike later in the year or still too early? Things are different from a couple of years ago. Back then, fixed was cheaper than floating. At the moment, floating is cheaper than fixed. And if you think interest rates stay relatively low for quite a while, then floating remains better than fixed. If you think they're going to rise very quickly and soon, then fixing starts to make sense. But my, you wouldn't my, panic? No need to no, panic my, my view is that interest rates, because of these problems globally with too much debt in the world and here, interest rates are likely to remain lower than some people think for quite a bit longer. Bernard Hickey, thank you very much. From interest.co.nz and Daryl Evans from the Mungary Budgeting Services Trust. Thanks for coming in. Thank you.